the sustained effects of other illegal immigrants who have entered with rather nefarious intent. Like earlier this, ne this year, the nation learned of the murder of an innocent 22-year-old nursing student, Lake and Riley, at the hands of a, an illegal immigrant, also known as a gang member. We're seeing what's going on in New York. I, you know what? Why single out? It's in every state. Did you see the woman who was trying to walk into church on Sunday? Disgraceful. She's, I don't know, it, it, you see the, the surveillance video. I don't know, she's probably in her late 60s, maybe 70. By herself. And a person who was later found to be an illegal immigrant. Cold cocked her while she was on her maybe fifth of seven steps. Down she goes. Knocked out cold. And the guy's rummaging through her pocketbook and thinks she dropped and taking everything that they can from her. This is all at church. Good morning, it's Gary Byron, 9-11 here on this uh, hump day. Glad to have you with us on board the old morning train. Our next guest into the Daily Connerton Memorial Company interview chair, former colleague of mine in the House, and uh, I don't think I appreciated him as uh, then as much as I, I do now, uh, but, but, but I'll tell you this. Ever since I've ever known him, he's been one of the hardest working legislators that there is. And I mean that bar none. Uh, he was reelected, I know, in, in 2022 uh, to run for, in the Senate, where he's doing a yeoman's job every day. I don't mean, when I say every day, my friends, I don't just mean during the session. I mean every day. There's constituent service that a lot of people aren't aware of uh, that, go on, that goes on year round. And he's not afraid to speak his mind. You know how you hear double speak from a lot of our elected officials will change their tune depending on who they're speaking in front of? Well, this gentleman doesn't do that. He doesn't mind you disagreeing with him. He's not going to curb his opinion to suit you. God, we need more of that. Let's welcome back to the show State Senator Rob Sampson. Senator, good morning. Good morning, Gary. Thank you so much for those kind words. And uh, I, 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 you know, I uh, have a lot more appreciation for you these days on the radio. We barely knew each other back in, back in the day when we served together. And that's, that's a shame. But uh, thank you for all you do every day to make sure that uh, the truth hits the airwaves and, and gets to the people. I, no, listen, and I appreciate that. We all have our, our roles to do in, in this cause. You know, and I tried to explain to, some, to people, um, I think I said this on the air I, several months ago and every now and then in person they're like well how come you didn't know this person they were in the legislature at the same time that you were and i say well it's kind of like going to college you could have a roommate or somebody that's right across the hall from you but their major is different and you don't have any classes with them your entire four years of college you know but you know who they are i mean you see them in the hallway you, see, you interact with them when at you know at lunch or maybe you you know, I, but you don't have any classes with them. Well, the same is, it's very similar to the legislature because you could have somebody that's right across, uh, have their office right across from yours and never have a committee with them. You know, you only see them in the chamber when it's time to vote on, you know, uh, all the bills. So, um, and they, they actually, once I made the comparison to a, the college, uh, they, they, under, they had a better grasp of it. They have a better uh, understanding of what the legislature could be like. They think everybody knows everybody intimately and uh, yeah i remember a bill it was in the transportation committee and i'd hear from um my constituents saying hey you know uh, vote no on that vote and i'm like i don't have a vote at all i don't sit on the transportation <laughs> committee but because they just they hear about it on the news or they read about it and they think oh i better contact my legislator they just think you vote on everything and that you don't really do that until it passes through committees and it hits the chamber floor but i digress i apologize um you had a, uh, a, a you actually led a press conference last week on uh, election reform. Uh, you know, folks, don't be fooled by Democrats who say they want election reform uh, because they really don't. Not when it's you know, they, well, not when the, the cheating goes into their favor. Um, talk about that pressure a little bit, Rob. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, and exact, that's exactly the point, which is that the Democrats. You know, they're going to try and make the case that they are addressing the, the Bridgeport problem and the, uh, the growing concern over election integrity, but they're really not. 
I mean, the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, over the last 10 years, they have expanded uh, access to voting, which is a good thing. But while they've been uh, focused on expanding access, they've also been, uh, you know, leaving, you know, huge gaping holes in our security uh, to make sure that our elections are honest and can be counted on. And, uh, you know, as that has occurred, uh, so have uh, the uh, more difficult uh, circumstances, you know, the Bridgeport issues and, and, and other places around the state. So people want to focus on that one thing, but there's been uh, a number of other things that have happened around the state as well. Uh, and, you know, they've kind of, uh, you know, made a, a case that they're going to put cameras on drop boxes and, you know, that's supposed to solve the whole problem. And uh, the fact of the matter is that's not going to solve anything. I mean, in fact, we saw in Bridgeport right. that they had right. three subsequent elections where they put cameras on drop boxes, and the same terrible kind of things occurred anyway. So I, I don't see that fixing. What we really need to do is address the whole mail-in voting scheme that we have in the state. Other states that have, you know, significant amounts of absentee voting or mail-in voting, they, they actually have uh, protocol in place. They, they require identification. They have a signature verification process. We don't have any of those things. And as a consequence, our uh, mail-in voting is ripe for fraud. And uh, and I want to draw more attention to that. And I want to hold the Democrats' feet to the fire that we need to address those things uh, if we really want to uh, do right by the people. Why, uh, why, why do we really also, do we need 14 days of, of in advance of, of uh, the election day to vote? I, way too long, if you ask me. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I, Gary, I mean, for me, voting happens on one day in person. And uh, if you can't be, uh, you know, in person and voting on that day for a legitimate reason, and there are certainly people that cannot vote in person, they're, you know, uh, disabled or they're homebound or uh, they have legitimate reason for being out of town or something like that. And we've always had a mechanism yeah, for that. We've always had um, that, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, that used to be a handful of votes in every election, you know, less than 1%, maybe 1% or 2% at most in an election. And now you're talking about expanding that same system to 25 30 even 40% of uh, votes cast, like certainly during the pandemic. And, um, you know, and, of course, this uh, November they're going to actually have no excuse absentee voting on the ballot. Uh, effectively, we already have it now, uh, but that will only further the um, – uh, you know, the process where uh, you'll have more candidates, uh, more third party organizations actively sending out ballot applications. It'll be a mess, uh, effectively. And, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. For me, the best solution is to go back, if we can, to the way things used to be. But if we can't, we can certainly leave some of the Democrats' expansion to access in place. But what you do is you stop the unsolicited mailing of the ballot applications. You make it so. Uh, you're, if you're eligible, you just, you know, contact and ask for the ballot application yourself. Everyone still has the same rights, the same access. It's just going to cut out the ballot harvesting and the, uh, the expense as well. Uh, because if, you know, municipalities or the states are sending out these ballot applications, we're all paying for that in our taxes. Uh, and it's exorbitant in cost. Yeah, one of, the, one of the things I'm afraid of, and I mention this all the time, is I'm afraid that the actual winner of the election this November will not be the winner that's declared. Um, it, it, it's it, it, all that matters is who's declared the winner, who actually wins the election. You know, uh, it seems to just go on the wayside, and I'm afraid of the lack of integrity that we have in our election system, as I'm sure you are, and as I know our our, our listeners are. And I just think that you know, with all of these, with absentee or no excuse absentee ballots, and mail-in ballots, and you know, w voting 14 days prior to election, I just think that the more of these obstacles that get in the way from what it, what used to be. Um, the, and the more the people that touch our ballot, the potential for the for fraud, I guess. Uh, I, I'm I'm just nervous about that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I mean, think about it. I mean, you know, when I first started voting, I'm 54, but I mean, I, no one questioned a single election. I, I don't I don't remember anyone saying, you know, that uh, there was. Uh, you know, uh, elections were stolen, et cetera. And it seems like every presidential election for the last several, at least, uh, that's the main topic of conversation. Those are the talking points on both sides. Um, and, that, and that's that. Uh, and when you talk to people on the street, 
uh, they will tell you that they don't trust elections like they used to. We, we've got to fix that. Um, you know, and, and there are legitimate problems. I mean, the Democrats want to kind of, you know, you know, sweep this under the rug as if it's, it's not a big deal that anytime someone mentions, uh, you know, election integrity, it's, it's just a conspiracy theory. Well, we know that's not true. We know that there is, you know, demonstrated, um, you know, uh, instances. And that's why the, the Bridgeport video is so important, because that was a situation where, you know, everything that me and others have been claiming for years actually showed up on camera. It's like, how do you deny that anymore? Mm. And yet um, they still do. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, the Democrats' reaction to uh, the press conference we had last week was that, you know, this is about voter suppression and here the Republicans go again. And I mean, I, I really hope people don't fall for that garbage. I mean, it's absurd to say that requiring someone to verify their identity and for the process of voting is somehow voter suppression. Uh, it's what is expected, uh, and it's the only way a legitimate uh, society actually operates, in my opinion. Yeah, and it had been for years. Only three minutes after the hour of nine, uh, we took that break early because I, uh, Senator Sampson wrote uh, a, a, not even a good, but a phenomenal um well, op-ed, I think it came out a few days ago on April 2nd, and it was published in the Connecticut Examiner having to do with illegal immigration. Um, and you can find this, I'm sure, online. Please, I, I can't do it any better justice than you can, Rob. Please talk about that. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is that uh, in Connecticut, this is an issue that we hardly ever hear about, certainly in the legislature. But it's a huge national issue. And in fact, I think it may be the number one issue uh, in the presidential election coming up, uh, you know, the debate over the border. And the point of my article really is that, uh, you know, the border is not just a national issue. This is something that affects us all. Uh, the Connecticut Democrats, uh, you know, I'm talking about elected Democrats, too, not, not people on the street, but the Connecticut elected Democrats in Hartford. Uh, they have focused over the last decade or so on making Connecticut really a magnet for illegal immigration. Uh, in fact, when you were there, Gary, I'm sure you remember, they passed the uh, the law, you know, uh, creating a, a drive-only driver's license. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, what, what do you want to do? I mean, maybe create a, you know, a flashing neon sign that says, you know, if you, you cross the border illegally in Mexico, come to Connecticut because we're going to give you lots of freebies. And effectively, that's what's happened. You know, we give out driver's licenses. Uh, I, it was confirmed just last week that the state of Connecticut – uh, does not uh, care whether you are a lawful immigrant or not, or a citizen, uh, in order to be eligible for any state program whatsoever. You're eligible. Um, the only restrictions are on uh, federal aid because there are actual federal laws to prevent that. Um, so, you know, you have people that are partaking of our uh, benefits and, and uh, you, you know, utilizing, uh, you know, goods and services that are paid for by Connecticut taxpayers and citizens of this country uh, that they, they shouldn't be, in my opinion. And uh, it's a drain on our economy. It's a drain on our culture. And most recently, the big issue, obviously, is that we're seeing heightened, uh, you know, instances of violence around the country. Uh, you mentioned the, the issue of, you know, Lake and Riley. But, I mean, there, it, it, as you pointed out, this is happening all the time everywhere. And people don't know about it because it's not something that's often reported. Uh, you know, I, I hear anecdotal stories or somebody will, will tell me, you know, one of my local cops will mention to me, hey, by the way, did you see that story last week about that, you know, that accident with the fatality? Well, it turns out the guy who was driving was an illegal immigrant. And, I, you know, it's like, why do these things make it into the news? I think that if people were really aware of the impact uh, they might be more concerned about this issue. And I'm, and I'm trying to raise the issue for a number of reasons. Number one, I believe public safety is a paramount job of a uh, state lawmaker. It's something that uh, I'm passionate about. Crime is out of control in the state for a number of reasons. That's just another uh, avenue that we can address. Uh, and then, of course, the economic reasons. You know, things are not affordable in Connecticut. And uh, I believe that that's a contributing factor. So if we address those couple of things, I think we'll all, we'll all be far better off. When you hear and see the video of the crime, um, you know, we, we, you talk about Lake and Riley. We've heard that story. And I don't want to belittle that, but she's only one person uh, in, a, in a nation full of uh, crimes that are committed, heinous crimes, murders that are, uh, are perpetrated by illegal immigrants. Um, and, and yet, here we are taking better care of them than our own veteran homeless. Uh, it, 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 does, that, does that not make your stomach churn and say, we're so much better than this? 
Right. It, it makes my blood boil. Yeah, it really does. I mean, that's the reason why I wrote the article. Uh, and I think it bothers a lot of people. I think people are frustrated. They're annoyed that the federal government hasn't addressed the, uh, you know, uh, the border issue properly. You don't have a country unless you have a secure border, in my uh, uh, opinion. And we, we need to address that. And, and to compound the fact that the federal government is failing to, uh, you know, maintain our border security, uh, effectively Connecticut and the Democrats in Hartford are inviting people to cross that border and to come to our state and to get free stuff to get free stuff paid for by Americans and Connecticut taxpayers. Uh, I just want to say something really quick, which is that I, I certainly have no issue with people immigrating to the, to the country. This is a nation of immigrants. You know, the Democrats forever try and turn this around as if it's a, you know, a, a bigoted issue or something like that. My girlfriend's from another country. She's uh, just became a citizen herself. Um, I, I love the fact that America is a melting pot and people want to come here. But there is a process and there is a lawful process and people need to follow it. Um, yeah, amen to that. We're running out of time. Uh, what about the paid sick leave bill? Is that going to pass? Uh, I certainly hope not. There are three paid sick days bills, actually, Gary. You know, they, they want every avenue covered. Uh, and, of course, they're negotiating right now. And I think that uh, what we need to do, uh, you know, uh, the folks opposed to this, you know, a barrage of mandates on businesses that are passing costs onto consumers uh, and costing us jobs and opportunities as well. We've got to stand firm and just say no. Uh, I think there's a tendency uh, too often to try and negotiate these things, but they just come back incrementally. You know, if they passed paid sick days for businesses with 50 or more employees. Now they're trying to cut it down to as little as one employee businesses. Um, you know, they might settle on 25, but that's not a benefit to us. I mean, it just means they'll come back next year uh, to expand it again. All right, what about the DEI bill? That's uh, the diversity, uh, inclusion, equity, all that. What's, what's up with that bill? Or There's a couple of those bills. I actually managed to stop one of them in the GAE committee. Uh, the other one actually passed out of labor. I spoke for about an hour. And uh, if, I, if, if I could get your listeners to watch anything I've ever done, I, I would encourage them to watch that, uh, that hearing and uh, my hour-long debate with the, uh, the chairs over DEI. Because I put them back in, uh, in, in, in their right place, which is that that policy is racist. It's not uh, a policy to stop racism, but it is, in fact, discriminatory. Sure. Because it divides people up by race, color, gender, uh, and so on, and then, uh, you know, gives certain people benefits. Um, at the expense of others. And that's, that's fundamentally wrong, and they can make whatever arguments they want. I, I'm out of time. I got to be wrong to me. Let me just ask you one quick question, yes or no. Do, do illegals have to take a driver's exam when they get their license? So, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think so, yeah. Okay. A lot of bad bills. You guys go back into session, what, Monday? We are in session today. I'm actually sitting in the car about to head up to the Capitol as soon as I hang up with you. Good luck, brother. Thanks for your time today. We'll talk and do a wrap-up uh, in about a month. Always my pleasure, Gary. Thanks so Pleasure's much. Pleasure's always mine, brother.